We're gonna show you how to build a Milwaukee Packout M12 trailer tester. There's not much more frustrating than trying to track down a trailer light issue or trailer electrical issues, especially when you're not sure if it's the actual vehicle or if it's the trailer that's having the issues. Now I know there's the little plug-in testers where you can look at the LED lights and stuff like that, but this is actually going to let us power the actual trailer and each one of the circuits so we can have switches to turn each one of the circuits on and then we can actually run down and test if the light's not coming on we can kind of back up with our tester and find out where the break in continuity is or where the issue is and we're going to have a link to each one of these products in the description of the video most of them purchased straight from amazon let's get started Okay, we should have just about everything here that we will need to build this. Uh, this is a seven-way connector. We've got both ends. Uh, we've got an M12 battery and an M12 adapter. We've got some 10-24 uh, one-inch screws and nuts. Probably have to cut those down. Um, and these are basically push-button actuators. So push it down, it's constantly on. And back up, it's off. We we'll also have an LED uh, ring in there. It lights up those are like half inch size and these are a little smaller i think um, so anyway just a couple of different push buttons so we can actually activate each different circuit here's a uh, a plug for the 12 volt adapter where we'll power everything this is a fuse block a little overkill but that's okay you still want to protect each one of the circuits our milwaukee pack out box one of the half boxes and then this is a trailer light kit uh, we need this anyway so it's a four prong uh, trailer light kits are pretty typical and some fuses for this so that should be about everything you probably need some you know uh, some wire strippers um, some some pliers and uh, probably screwdriver cutters you know general stuff so let's go ahead and get started the first thing I want to do is kind of wire up each one of my push buttons I'm going to need I believe seven of these I want a power button that powers everything kind of powers up the whole fuse blocks if you will and then I want a power button for each different uh, left turn signal, right turn signal, brake lights, uh, you know, um, the brake signal for a seven way um, and, and all that different stuff. So anyway, I think I'm going to need six different power buttons and a main power button. And so that's why I bought two different packs here. So let's go ahead and get those started because what we have, if you buy this kit, they put this card in and, and it tells you if you want the LED light on all the time, you basically wire these two uh, red wires together. If you want it to just come on with the power button when you push the button, which is the way we want to do it, then you wire these two together. And basically what you do in this situation is looking at it here, we take these two red wires and we wire those together and that's what will actually go to that individual light or to that, to that trailer plug. So. I'm going to go ahead and combine all these, terminate the ends on all these, get it ready, and then we'll go to our pack out, start drilling holes. So this is going to power our fuse panel. So power will come in on these two, and then this will run to the fuse panel. So I'll put a piece of heat shrink down here. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, so now this is the main power button. Now we're going to go to each one of the bulbs that it will tie to. And if you're looking down on this switch where the black wire is, so if the black wire is at the bottom, which by the way, what I'm telling you is exactly what this card shows you. Um, so we're going to take the top red wire and the right red wire and tie those together. And that's what is going to go to each one of the trailer lights. So I'm going to use a female connector with this one. Make sure it's on well. And 
then the other two wires, remember to put your insulators down there if you're using non-insulated crimp non-insulated terminals like me. There's one. Okay, we've got all the uh, push buttons wired together and ready to go in the box. Uh, let's go ahead and get the seven-way plug wired up. Uh, this is our ground, our white is ground. And for the rest of these, we're gonna use a spade connector and that will connect directly to uh, this side of the spade connector, the female spade connector here. So put males on all six of these and then we'll get them in the box and start building this thing. Okay, we've got all those done for the seven way, the ground and the six male spades. Let's get that box done. Now our plan is to mount all the switches right here in this center panel and this little area here, we had a little sticker made and let's see if it's gonna work. Looks like for the most part, it should work. Play air bubbles in there but hey how do you know now we're going to use the smaller buttons across these five a larger button for the 12 volt and a larger button for uh, the power button so let's get these drilled out now before we go any further let's make sure that's going to work Perfect. And again, this one and this one is going to be a little bit bigger. Perfect. Covered up our sticker, but I think we can live with it for now. This is version one anyway. Since this is our power button, we'll put it here. 12 volt here. So don't fret, all your fittings will fit in there. Just put one of them in at a time. Now my plan was to mount this fuse block down here, but I believe I'm going to mount it right here and all these wires can go directly there to keep everything nice and clean up here. And then we'll just have to, uh, to run our power wires here and then our wires from uh, the seven way as well. So I will definitely want to uh, mount this with screws, but for holding it in place till we do, I think, Use a little hot glue. Probably not going to look too pretty under that lid, but that should hold well for now. Then we'll drill our holes and put the screws in. Pretty repetitious work so hopefully the fast forwarding through all this is understood so I just made a change on the power button uh, ground I put an eyelet on here rather than a spade connector and I also put one on the main 
ground coming from the M12 battery. Separate these by washers. And this is driving me nuts that there is no heat shrink on here, even though it's a ground. It's bugging me. You're saying, Tim, did you really cut that connector off just to put some insulation on the ground wire? I sure did. That looks better. So now just a quick test for a battery in here. Power is on, tail lights on, turn signal on, right turn, reverse, brake, 12 volts. Yep. Everything powers up, good to go. I'm not sure if I'm too crazy about this really low voltage wiring here. I'll probably change that out and maybe go directly to the battery, but let's finish this thing. So here's what I have here, and I wanna mount this to the side of this case. I think I wanna go right in the middle here, right here on this flat spot. So I'm gonna take my calipers, and I think this is less than two inches. Yeah, 1.8. 3.86 something like that but we have this big notch here too and since it screws in I don't think I'll have a, a hole saw that size but I know I have a two inch so I think we'll go to a two inch hole saw and uh, then let's find so we'll call that five and a half so let's go to 2.25 and we don't have to be exact Let's say about right there. So I'll go ahead and drill us a starter hole. And you can see I opened this box. I don't want to grab all that wiring when I'm drilling through. Yeah, yeah there's our two inch. And this would be too small. Yeah, that'd be too small. Yeah, I would recommend that you bracing that up. I'm trying to keep it center of the camera with my arm stretched out. Can't really brace that well, but we got it done and a little higher speed's gonna help. Don't put it in low, it's just gonna try to grab. Okay, now let's see if we nailed it. Oh yeah. Yeah, so now we can drill our holes, put our screws in there and we're good. Somehow we definitely didn't hit center, so my math was way off on hitting center there, but it's gonna have to work. Now it's pretty simple. We're just going to attach the spade connectors to each of these, and then this should go to ground. everything should be connected should have no loose ends other than what's going to the battery I'm going to use all 5 10 and 15 amp fuses I would definitely say you'd probably be better off just to use some smaller even 3 amp fuses and that's if you're wanting to go to this magnitude of protecting the system which is not a bad idea you don't want to somehow over amp your trailer wires but you definitely don't want 15 and even 10, 15 amp fuses in there like I have right now, but for testing purposes only. Okay, now testing uh, power, tail, left turn, right turn, back lights, brake, 12 volts, we're good. 
All right, so I did a couple of things here. I drilled a couple of small holes here and mounted a zip tie to just kind of hold that cable. So when you're folding this up and down that it's not, uh, you know, bending in the wrong location or, you know, moving around. So it should always kind of bend at the same area now. So I added that one. And then I also drilled a couple of holes here and uh, put this bigger zip tie. Uh, it's actually a grip tie. It's got a rubber lining right here, really cool reusable zip ties. And that's going to hold my M12 battery very well, actually. I mean, you can cinch this thing down if you want to, but that rubber lining there really holds that well. And it's not going to slide around. And I could trim that if I wanted to, or I'll just tuck it, tuck it down in there, and it should be fine. Power tail left turn right turn reverse brake 12 volts now let's see if it actually works there's our grip tie zip tie and there's our small zip tie and then there's our seven-way plug now I could also uh, mount a four-way wire there too and maybe have it coming out here and just wire that into the into the fuse panel which I could easily add or you could have your seven to four way adapter or even seven to five way and use that as well and that's what we'll use for testing here. Okay just so we don't have to go outside and actually hook it up to a trailer I've got some trailer lights hooked up here. I uh, don't mind my mess of wiring but anyway we have it wired up correctly other than our jumper wire jumping from uh, the white wire the ground wire uh, to everything but anyway we've got tail lights uh, we should have stoplights, turn signals, and then we've got our four-way plug plugged into our seven to four-way adapter. And we'll go ahead and push that in. That locks into place. Got our self-contained pack out trailer tester. We'll turn our power on. Tail lights should give us both lights. There we go. The running lights. And by the way, I didn't hook up these running lights. I think we get it right. They would tie into that same circuit right there. And we come on uh, with those tail lights and running lights. And left turn. There we go. And by the way, if you wanted a flasher on this, you could add an LED flasher, you know, for 10 bucks or something and add that into the circuit. I don't care. I just want to make sure does the light work. Right turn. There you go. So which is, your turn signals are also your brake light. So this is your brake signal as well. So there we have it, right turn, left turn, and tail. Now, obviously, if we were on a seven-way circuit, we would also have reverse lights, uh, which we see power there. We'd have a brake signal, and then we'd also have a possible 12-volt auxiliary as well that could charge batteries or something else uh, on the RV or trailer or what have you. So there you have it. It works. Pretty cool. Now, what would I change? I think I'd probably take a little more time in routing the wires. I think that I would probably have some of those uh, zip tie holders maybe glued to the top here. Where we could route these down and kind of mount it to the lid. And I can ob obviously come back and do that. Um, I'll probably run a heavier gauge wire coming maybe right off the battery with just some spade connectors. But I wanted to use this adapter here. I really don't mind the, uh, the grip lock tie, the zip tie, uh, holding the battery thing there. It actually works very well. It's easy to grab and, and pull out and pull the battery out. Um, so I don't think I would change that. I really don't. I'd probably mount this maybe towards the front and because we have plenty of room and that would get it out of the way of all the wires. But it still gets out of the way fine. I don't have to you know move wires or anything. I can just close it, lock it up, and now it's a self-contained unit. I can take it wherever I need to go. We really like our Milwaukee Packout trailer tester. We think it turned out pretty good, especially for V1. We were literally just kind of making this on a whim and, uh, you know, drew it out on paper. Um, but definitely would do better on the, uh, the label here. We're kind of going downhill on our, 
on our label making skills and we also covered part of it up with our buttons but hey again for v1 we think it's acceptable uh, we love the fact that light up buttons here and we can activate each uh, each wire or channel as we need to and as you'll see here with the tail lights we get running lights but on the left turn, turn signal, there is no running light, just the stop light turn signal. Uh, so everything works properly. Same way with the seven way, if we had the seven way hooked up. And what's cool about this is there's really plenty of room if we need to dissect this or disassemble it or carry maybe a, you know, some different spare parts or something in here, we can easily do that. So the pack out is still functional to carry other things as well as house all the stuff here. We'll have a link in the description of all the different tools and pieces, well, all the different parts and some of the tools as well and pieces that we use. Now, price on this, you may have a lot of this stuff laying around, so you may do this with as little as, you know, 30, 40 bucks. Now, we spent probably somewhere in the neighborhood a little over $100, but we bought the trailer kit uh, because we got to wire up a, ba a boat trailer. And also we bought a, a lot of other things as well that probably really didn't need to. Uh, the fuse panel, do you want that? I want that. I just want that extra layer of security. Uh, but again, you could probably skimp on some of this stuff and still do okay. But we're happy with utilizing the zip ties as well and not hard mounting like the, the battery um, adapter or anything like that. So, hey, let us know what you think about this. Let us know if you would add something to this as well. So. Keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.